This is the beach where the flip-flops come at the end of their flip-flop trip. But where does a flip-flop trip begin? The floor of a flip-flop factory, on the shelf of a flip-flop shop, or the foot of a flip-flop fan? And what snaps the strap of each flip-flop that finds its flip-flop fate? A flip too far, a flop too fast, or a slip that flapped it back? And what does the sea say when she sees another flip-flop fall? Oh, flip-flop and flotsam, fair and foul, I'll freely float you all. But is the flip-flop trip really finished once the waves wash them up on the shore? Or could the beachcombers bring them back to life, turning flotsam into something worth much more? Flip-flop trips are beginning the world over, in huge numbers every day. And nowhere are they more prolific than here in East Africa, where the coastal city of Mombasa alone is the origin of 20 million pairs a year. The production process is simple, but requires many hands. Originally, the ancient footwear was made of wood, but now strong synthetic rubber meets the need. various sizes, one by one, the soles are stamped out, each with three holes for the straps. Bagging up, sacking up, and stacking up. Ready for action, they take to the streets where the demand is high, but the supply is always a step ahead. The market is flooded with choice and the styles change endlessly as the brands compete for a foothold in the industry. Some even design their own home brands. Using old car tires, they create the ultimate roadworthy footwear. But whatever the style, the business is big, and Mombasa is just the beginning. 80,000 pairs leave the town each day, heading all over the African continent. But there's one particular place where flip-flops really make their mark. Lamu, a small island of Swahili people whose vibrant culture grew from the African and Arabian trading legacy a thousand years ago. The traditional sailing dhows are still central to their way of life, and much time is spent at the water's edge. Nothing could suit the seafarers better than this cheap, cheerful and amphibious footwear. Known here as pata patas, they are a basic necessity for all and have become an integral part of Swahili dress. Without any cars on the island, the Lamu feet are hard working.